Welcome to part 2 of the video series about the TP-Link TLSG108. In this video, we are going to walk through the initial setup and the functions of the switch. You can click on the above link to watch the unbox video. The switch is uh, plug and play, so you can just connect it with the router and PCs and it's going to rock like a gem. However, to accept the advanced configuration such as traffic monitoring, VLAN and QoS, you have to log into the switch web-based GUI or to do it with the configuration utility which is only supported on Windows for now. In this video, we will configure the switch via the web-based GUI. So the first thing, how to find a switch management IP. So you can check the DHCP lease status by logging to your router and see. So in this case, I will log into my router, which is the PF sense, and we will see it. All right, so we go to status, DHCP lease, and here you have the switch name TLH108, which the IP address of 192, that was it, A dot. 22.11 so let yeah just go to it here we have the tp link or the second way you can run in the arp so arp stands for address resolution protocol and it is used to discover the link layer address such as my address let's try arp yeah. okay right so this is my current IP address 192.168.22.2 so this is the IP address of this PC and this is the IP address of the router of the PFSense router and here you can see the IP address of the TP-Link switch yeah so yeah we are good to go and you can also compare the, the, the MAC address of the device with the my address on the label at the back of the switch. All right, so the default password for the switch is admin. So here we are at the switch GUI. We have five main menus. We have the systems, switching, monitoring, VLAN, and QoS. You can view the basic information of the switch in the system info page. Yeah, so let's go. So system info, and uh, you can change the host name of the switch by enter a new value here on the device descriptions. In the IP setting page, you can set a static IP for the switch or leave it to work with the DHCP mode. If the HCP client is enabled, the switch will obtain the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway from the DHCP server automatically. Otherwise, this uh, value should be configured manually. So here we can see that the DHCP status will enable and it's received an IP address and the subnet mask and the default gateway from the router, which is the PFSense. And with the user account management, you can modify the administrator username and password in order to refuse the illegal access. So please change your default password now if you haven't do it. So we have four drop down menus under the system tool, backup and restore, system reboot, system reset and firmware upgrade. With the config backup, you can backup the current configuration and restore this configuration in the future time. Who knows, uh, one day the switch is 40 and yeah, you bought a new replacement unit and it is good if you have the configuration backup and then you can restore it. System reboot will allow you to restart the device and please do not interrupt the power supply when the switch is restarting. You can also clear all the user configuration and revert the manufacturer default file with system resets. After the switch is recessed, it will reboot automatically. It will take around few minutes until the process complete. And do not power down the switch during the time, or else you can break the switch. And lastly, you can access to the local TP-Link website and download the latest software in order to upgrade the switch firmware. So as we can see in the system info, you have the hardware version. 
So make sure on the TP-Link download pay, you select the correct hardware version. Let's move to the next menu, switch change. This module is used to configure the basic function of the switch. On the port setting pay, you can configure and view the basic parameter of each port, including the port status, speed, and flow control. You can enable or disable a port by changing the value in the status. And you can manually configure the speed and the duplex. When the flow control is on, the switch can synchronize the speed with its period to avoid the packet loss caused by congestion. So let's say we have port number one and here we have a state that it enable and the speed and the blast is set to auto and the flow control is off. Next we have the IGMB snooping control pay and here you can enable or disable the IGMB snooping and yeah, you can uh, decide whether or not to report the message uh, suppression. So this setting is quite advanced and I will not explain it in this video but I will let it for you so that you can try to understand more about it. And the next topic which is the, one of the highlight feature of the switch which is the static ALGs. ALG stands for link aggregation roof and link aggregation is used to combine a number of ports together to make a single high bandwidth data part which can be highly extended the bandwidth. The bandwidth of the LAG or the trunk is the sum of the bandwidth of its member port. The switch allows you to set up two LAG group and each group can have up to four ports. So yeah, this is group one and you can select port one, port two. All right, so apply. And you can see here we have just set up one roof. The next step we have is monitoring. So monitoring module monitor the traffic information by switch and provides the convenient method to locate and solve the network problem. The monitoring section has four sub menus port statistics, port mirror, cable test, and load prevention. On port statistics page, you can view the statistics information of each port, which facilitate your monitor the traffic and locate for properly. So as you can see right here, we have this port number one and the status is off and yeah, the connection is one GBPS. And for port 2, we see that the link is down, so it's whether the, the device power off or there was some problem. And in my case, the device connected to the switch port was turned off, that's why the link is down. And we can see that there was some data flow and we have some packets setting in and out. So we can confirm that there was some device previously working and connected to the switch port, but now it's not. And the post mirror function to monitor and, and mirror the network traffic by forwarding the copies of incoming and outgoing packet from one or multiple ports to a specific port. Usually, the mirroring port is connected to a data diagnostics device, which is used to analyze and mirror packet for monitoring and troubleshooting in the network. The switch provides cable test to diagnose the connection status of the cable connected to the switch port and the distance to the problem location which facilitate you to locate and diagnose the trouble spot of the network. And with loop prevention enabled, the switch can detect loops using loop detection packets. When a loop is detected, the switch will block the corresponding port automatically. There are three types of VLAN modes supported in the switch. MTU VLAN port based VLAN and A02.1Q VLAN. The MTU VLAN multi-tenant unit VLAN defines an uplink port which will build up several VLAN. Each VLAN contains two ports, the uplink port and the one of the other ports in the switch. So the uplink can communicate with the other port but the other port cannot communicate with each other. Port-based VLAN are divided based on the port. By default, the port-based VLAN is enabled. 
here we are at the A02.1Q VLAN configuration page. The IEEE A02.1Q protocol defines a new format of the frame. It adds a tag header in the original Ethernet frame. VLAN tags in the packet are necessary for the switch to identify packets of different VLAN. The switch work at the data link layer in the OSI model. And if you want to know more about OSI model, you can just open a Google tab and search for it. For the VLAN ID, you can input any value from 1 to 4094. And here you can specify a name. We have three options, untag, tag, and not a member. So when the option is selected, untag, the switch will rob the tag header when sending out the packet. And if the option is selected tag, then the switch will add the VLAN tag to the packet when sending out and not a member. And lastly, we have the PVID. PVID stands for Port VLAN ID is a default VID of the port. When the switch receives an unVLAN tag packet, it will add a VLAN tag to the packet according to the PVID of the relevant port and forward the packets. And by default, the PVID of all ports is 1. And the last menu we have QoS. QoS stands for quality of service. It provides different quality of service for various network applications and requirements and optimize the bandwidth resources distribution so as to provide a network service experiment of a better quality. So we have three sub menu which is the QoS basics, bandwidth control and storm control. Here we are at the QoS page. The switch support three modes of quality of service control, post base, A02.1P base and DSCP slash A02.1P base. By default, the QoS mod is set to DSCP slash A02.1P base. And this is uh, quite an advanced configuration, so I will not go too deep into it. But I will just show you the menu here. We have the port base priority setting. So yeah, you can select the port in the priority queue, low it to high it. On the bandwidth control page, you can set the in red ray and the x red ray of the port. If you leave it blank, it will be unlimited. Lastly, we have storm control. Storm control allow the switch to filter broadcast, multicast, and UL frame in the network. If the transmission rate of the chosen packets is six, the set bandwidth, the packets will be automatically discarded to avoid network broadcast storm. So far, we have just gone to the menu of the switch TLSG10AE. If you see the video in headphone, please like, share and subscribe to the channel to support me and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.